Hey everyone, this video is uh, going to be about the ITC and the actual games that I played and kind of just going over round by round, you know, what I did, how it went. I'll make comments about how my team did and how the tournament progressed and, you know, just talk about what I played and um, my thought process. I don't believe I'll be doing any, like, other videos, like, specifically on my games. If people have questions about certain rounds and want more details, um, feel free to comment. I can either write about it or make a video, but I, I don't have that much to s I mean, I have stuff to say, but I don't want to go on 40 minutes around when you can't even see pictures of it and how and how it worked. All right. So round one, I played Squatters Right. Now, originally I was supposed to do Stake a Claim, but our Hammond player had issues with his flight. He wasn't going to make it for the first round, so we had to have an Austrian Merc. Tristan play with us and since he was going to play Nelly that that means our guild player had to play Terra first round and his best was stake a claim so I moved over to squatters right anyway I played squatters rights close claim jump eliminate leave your mark however to tail him going into this round I told my team I just the biggest fear of mine is playing against something like the Vix because it's close deployment and it's so easy just to just r bum rush me when I'm playing Sommer, and I knew I was going to play Sommer. And so I was just like, oh, I don't want to play him, blah, blah, blah. Little do I know, we play against Black Joker Society. They have Maria, who uh, used to be a really high-ranked Vix player, and she plays Squatter's Rights with me. So I don't get what I want, and I have to play it round one. All right, so Squatter's Rights. I play Sommer, a Skeeter, Fingers, Bert, Maris. Three bayous, lightning bug slop. I believe that's it. I think that should be all my points. Um, I, I run a very similar list almost all the event. I do trade in fingers and stuff for other models, and that's basically all I changed. I really think all I changed was fingers, his upgrades, and whether if he was gone, I had like a Skeeter and Trixie, or I had a pick -a bolt and then maybe the slop. I think slop was out one game. But I, I tended to keep a core. A lot of it was because I played, since I got to pick which round I played, I didn't really need as much killing. I was always in, like, a very schemey uh, ski, uh, round, so I didn't need more firepower. I didn't need, like, a Frank or a Taxidermist. Uh, I was better off having a Maris and a Fingers. I will say right now that I do use Fingers three times. And I know I used to say fuck fingers, and it was a joke all weekend, but he works in in the right scheme pools, and, and I can't deny that. So I got to use them a couple times. It worked out. But uh, anyway, I was playing squatters, right? It was close. Deployment. And first game, I ended up winning, but the biggest thing that happened was Summer died turn one. So, you know, I did my summoning. I, I had to put two wounds on him because of the lightning bug. He shot Vanessa at her, at him, did four wounds, hit the moderate, and then he like, and I don't play against Vix that much, so he did all this stuff, and he ended up getting his Vic, her, her Vic of Blood very close to mine, very close to Sommer, and he'd already gone, I really couldn't get him out of there, I was like looking and stuff, like could I shoot him and move him? Maybe, I, I think the only thing I could have did, maybe, is I think I could have shot him and, like, pushed him a couple times. It would have been hard. I was kind of bunched up um, where I had to deploy. Nonetheless, what I ended up doing was, I just said, he had, like, four models close. The two Vix, Lazarus, and Vanessa. And I just ran Maris 15 inches into the mi middle of them. Um... Now, I engaged them so they couldn't charge, but they could move away. She doesn't have an engagement. What ended up happening was she spent her first AP to kill Maris. Well, Maris blew up and did four burning to all the people there. She then moved and charged. She used her melee expert to kill her. So moved and charged still on the summer. He only had six wounds left. She had, like, plus damage and all this stuff, and I just died to the first hit. And I, the way I was positioned... She had enough charge to block me in so I couldn't squeal. So I was like, oh shit. And she killed him. 
in like one hit. But the whirlwind only killed, I think, one other model, if that. I actually maybe it didn't kill anything. I don't think the whirlwind kid does anything because she, I don't know how many. I don't think she had any high cards left, and I just flipped it. She was a couple, and I and I they survived. So I lost summer, but the vic of blood had four burning on her, and with like slop haulers and stuff, I managed to attack her several times. And get it so she died to burning. She had to prevent two. She prevented one and died to burning. Uh, Vanessa lived with one wound. She was very close to dying. I really wanted her to die. Uh, I think even fingers charged her. It only had to hit her once. I was like melee seven versus defense six with no cards. For either, or defense five maybe. With no cards for either of us. And I just couldn't get the hit. Um, but that happens. I mean I ended up killing the Vic of Blood. So I can't be too upset. Oh yeah her crew. I guess I should go over real quick. She had... The two Vicks, Lazarus, Vanessa, the child, Taylor, Gohana. I think, and I shit Laz, I think I, I might have said that. Um, turn two was big. Bird had already charged Johanna turn one, put a couple wounds on her. Um, he was, he had a good a hit to almost bring her to hard to kill, but I black jokered it. It happens. Because she might have died that turn, because I had a couple other... Like, I put a bunch of wounds of Vanessa and, like, Johanna turn one, and then it killed the Vic of Blood. So, going into round two, I actually had a lot of, set, a good bit of models left, and a lot of hers were really low. And Fingers was all up being annoying and, and denying some stuff. So, turn two, I killed Johanna. Fingers lived because he had, like, stilts and was, like, annoying people. Taylor got the two stake of flame markers. She was on the other side. Um, I tail them. I do. I have enough models to leave your, you know, claim jump, tail them, and squatter. So, and she did uh, limited leadership. She was up three right away. And basically, the game from there is I, I tie up like Lazarus a lot with like models because he's not as good as melee. It's like two, three, five, I think. It's just it's not as good, and he only ha he can't auto fire, and he really can't get away from you. So I just kept putting models in. Then she killed Vanessa, and then I just kept. Like tailing him, and like I killed blood eventually, or um, the ashes after she killed fingers because I just had a bunch of little models and I had a slop to heal him. Like lightning bug was coming in, Bert did a lot of wounds, and then I just schemed. So, what happened was Taylor was going to leave a mark because that's what her other scheme was. And what I would do is when she moved, I had so many activations, I would run my a bayou. 14, you know, 10 inches at her to stop the leave your mark and then, and then, um, tail him her. So not only did I deny to leave a mark, she had tail him, so that's a, you know, a two point swing, and then she would kill the bayou, try it again, and I'd run something else at her. So that's how I finished off tail him and stopped leave your mark. I just kept running models at her, at her marker, and tying her up so she couldn't move and drop another one, but I would always be close enough, you know, with the, with the model that was coming in to stop her. I did. She got all the squatters' rights. I couldn't deny it, which was fine. And I got all my schemes because she didn't have enough miles to flip mine anymore or stop me. So I had like a bayou, two bayous, and a, and a, a lightning bug just dropping stuff. So I ended up winning 10 10 7. It was a good game. I um, mean, you know, I was real scared when Summer died. But I just had so many models and, and had killed. Because I killed the blood when she came in, it was like a trade. And I know it's a master for the henchman, but I also put a lot of wounds on other models. And I just, it was just so scheme heavy that she couldn't kill enough after that. And, you know, Taylor's 12, 12, 13 stones. She's on the other side of the board scheme running. I mean, she scheme ran as well as a, a Bayou Gremlin would. So, you know, you're talking you're 12 stones down or 13 stones down because she's on the other side. Doing what she needs to do. Like, it has to happen. But we only have seven or so models. Everyone you lose in this kind of pool is just hard. So and, and Lazarus ain't gonna clean ain't scheme running. Malfo Child can't scheme run. Johanna died turn two. You know, turn three she Vanessa, Johanna and um Blood were all dead, so it was a good game for me. I, you know I was happy that I managed to win after losing Summer. Happy with the list. Um felt confident going into game two. Uh my team Everyone won except Travis tied in the stake of claim. So we started off nicely with four wins and a draw. Um, round two, we played against a UK team like Harrogate. It's some really good players. 
I ended up playing the Headhunter Corner versus Sand Deep. I ran the same list as game one, so I had fingers again. Except instead of stilts, I had hide in the mud because I thought he would be more mage heavy. He ended up being... He had like Miranda and Howard, so I would have liked stilts more. Um, but it's alright, it happened. So, this is the most interesting... I did lose this game, 8-10, and um, James played a great game. It, but I knew in this type of game, you have like kind of like two choices, right? So let's look at the schemes. Claim jump, eliminate the leadership, dig the grave, leave your mark, inspection, right? So we're not doing inspection. No one's doing inspection in this one. And if he did pick inspection, he would lose. And I'll tell you why afterwards. Dig the graves. He could probably do it to me, but he, uh, leave your mark and claim jump is so much easier for him. So in my mind, think of corner, right? Headhunter doesn't make you come to any particular part of the board. So... If you just move your entire crew from your corner to the one, co any, pick a corner, right? Another corner. You can easily do claim jump and leave your mark while defending that corner. So if somebody picks inspection, you're going to beat them because you're going to destroy one corner with yours. You could take dig, but depends on what the enemy crew is. And eliminate's probably not going to happen. I'm um, here at Sandy, by the way. Uh, what happened, what I, so in my head, if I just run my whole crew to one corner, do, get my six points, then it's a battle of heads, because he's going to do it, and he's going to do his Raptor, he's going to do a wind game, and he's going to get his, and he's Cassandra, he's going to get his limit, uh, leave your mark and claim jump. I really have trouble stopping that. Uh, so that was like what I thought in my head, and when we started playing, I saw him run Cassandra, a Raptor, and a Wing Game into one corner. So I thought to myself, hey, if I run Fingers over there, I'm 10, 11 stones to his 15 stones worth of stuff, and I'm pretty resilient to what he can do. They're not super damage dealers, and I have Squeal. Maybe I can annoy them enough to, so he loses a scheme or two, right? He doesn't get Leave Your Mark one or two turns, because I flip them in the mine, all this other stuff, right? Especially with practice production, if I flip it in the mine, he has to pick up another marker somewhere else, so it's already he's already behind because of all that. Right? So, what ends up happening is I go annoy him in a corner, I'm running to the other corner to do my schemes, and he goes like, he pushes with a wing game and goes fast, or not fast, but Miranda like double walks turns into Cerebus and jumps on fingers. He red jokers the first damage, so I'm down to like one wound. This is where stilts would have been nice. And now I see this was my this was my biggest mistake was having him over there, right? So I thought, alright, this is gonna be a close headhunter game. Maybe no one will get heads. I'm gonna win by preventing some claim jump, leave your mark. And then winning because I have it, right? What ended up happening was, because I went over there, he could basically gang up on fingers and get his head. And still get all his schemes, right? So, and the other part of the board was a lot of, like, he had, like, Performer, Howard, Wind Gammon. Well, I can't score off the Wind Gammon. And what did happen was, like, I killed the Performer early because he was blurring my bayous in, try to kill him and get heads, but because he was so far away, I couldn't get to the head, like, he could just walk, double walk Howard, pick up the head, and then he got the head, and I didn't. Um, in hindsight, what I would have done is not run fingers over there, and just said, alright, fuck it. Whatever. Get your points. You at least have to commit some models over there. If I commit nothing over there, and I commit my entire crew to the other corner, he has two choices. He can put his whole crew in one corner and tie 6-6. Six, six, or we can kind of fight it out in one side and maybe I get the advantage of the heads. If I had fingers, maybe I could run to the middle of his crew, make it so he can't pick up the heads, stuff like that. Um, you know, we, we had it was good stuff in between. I had chances. I mean, I almost denied some schemes. I almost got some heads. I... There were definitely chances that I had. I just, um, I just ended up losing. But I think that was my biggest strategy. And he played a great game, obviously. 
Um, but I definitely should have thought more about just committing to my, like, six points. And, um, you know, it's hard because a lot of... Because Arcanists do leave your mark so well, it's hard, like... I feel like if I was against most f crews other than maybe arcs, I would have the advantage because of, of my strategy. Because fingers could mess with them, or I have enough little models to mess with them, because they can't go that deep that fast. The fact that turn two, he can get into the back of my board is really big. Otherwise, it's not hard. Like, he's probably not getting leave your mark turn two, and then I can deny it from there. So... It's just, and they, maybe they're forced to take Eliminate or Dig, and it just opens up the game differently. Um, I do hope they change Leave Your Mark with Practice Production and Raptors. And I hope that Wing Cam and Drop Heads. Um, I'm not here to bitch about, like, them completely. I definitely could have won the game. There's things I might crew to bitch about. Um, it just definitely would have changed the game if he could drop heads with, like, Wing Gammon, and if they didn't have the practice production thing. But it was a great game. Probably one of my favorite games um, of the event, even though it's the one I lost. Uh, team, uh, our Hamlin player lost to Molly. That was, I believe there were some misplayed rules in that, in our disadvantage that we probably should have won that game. And time, he like took 30 minutes to make his crew. And my, our guy only had two minutes to do his last turn. He could have won if he just would have had a little bit of time to think. It didn't matter because... At that point, we knew we had won the three other games. So there's no point arguing it. Like, we had won the round. If it was a bigger deal, that, then it might have been something. Didn't matter. Um, our Kaladi player beat the other Kaladi player. Sandeep beat Nelly. And Travis, with his Nelly, beat Lynch. So we barely won. 3 2 was a close one. Probably our closest round. Um, but we're glad to make it out of it. All right, round three. We're against too much info. This is the one where it's like interference, record order, stake claim, record order, interference. So clearly I'm going to play probably the interference game, which I end up playing, right? Which one did I play? I played round table one. Interference standard, claim jump, accusation, dig the graves, cover breakthrough setup. I ended up playing against Leviticus. So I didn't play fingers for this because I don't need him. I took Trixie instead and another Skeeter to, for interference purposes. Um, I did have my Lightning Bug uh, Slap Holler combo, which has been working well for me. Lightning Bug does the majority of the healing, but after that, the, the Slap Holler is there to like clean up people who reckless or take a couple wounds here or there. Because I don't like hitting myself again if I don't need to. Um, this was a very cagey game, so I took Covert Breakthrough and Claim Jump, knowing that I didn't have to kill anything. He had a kind of an odd levy list. I'm used to, like, Ashes and Dust and whatnot, but he had Levy, Two Waves, Strong Arm Suit, Bell, Doxy, Hans, Johan, and two Necropunks, I believe is what he had. Um, Hans was in case I took a Pigapult. And... The other stuff was just to lure, I guess. Um, he took Claim Jump, uh, and I had a feeling he took Setup. He kept dropping markers in his lines, and I was either Dig Their Graves or Setup, because I don't think he'd be doing Breakthrough versus me. Or Accusation. So, because it's Interference, I kind of just played back. I just need, need to go up. I had no reason. I was winning. I had so many models that I could win Interference, I thought. Because he didn't take the Shooting Summon upgrade on Levy. The one that triggers on his gun. So the first two turns, he like he shot Sommer, did nothing. Shot a Bayou. And I think he shot two Bayous and killed one. Um, it's whatever. You know, I lose a Bayou, I get some cards. He doesn't create an A-bomb. It's a master activation. Levy goes back into waveform. What really hurt him was turn two. He went, you know, he killed a Bayou and went back in with a wave and then hid behind a wall. Or not totally behind a wall, but hid. Um, what happened was I managed to kill, I pushed one waif away from an anchor with Trixie, and then Sommer still had went and walked and focus shot and killed the other waif, and one was just out of line of sight. So he couldn't bring Levy back 
turn three. And then turn four, I pushed both waifs away, and he couldn't come. And I think I killed one. I think I pushed. No, that's what happened. That's right. I pushed one away again, and I tried to push the other one, and he burned the red joker to stop me. And then I buy you with, like, focus shot. Or didn't focus, just shot one with dumb luck. I had rams up and hit the moderate to kill her. Now, that was pretty lucky, but Lovey would have been really far back. I don't I don't think it would have won it for him if he came back. It just made, kind of solidified it. Um, and I think I won interference that round. And Hans just, like, hid behind a building to try to stop me from doing things. And Maris and, like, two bayous were going up there. And I just started dropping markers. And once I figured out he had... Because he tried to lure Bert into the triangle of ski markers, but I had models close enough to him to take the lures for him. And once I saw that, I was like, okay, he, he has set up on Bert. Because there's no one else he would do it, because he killed Trixie with the strong arm suit eventually. So I just ran Bert 15 inches away to claim a table quarter. Because I knew I was going to get at least 8. I got 10. Um, and he wasn't going to get set up. It was over at that point. 10-4, um, great guy. I really enjoyed him. Um, he was a lot of fun to play. Uh, uh, my team overall are Dreamer Player lost to Lilith. Travis won the Stake of Claim game. Our Hamlet Player lost to Ramos, who had like a... It was right Interference, right? Wait, look. He played the Interference close one. And just all the... He had like three Raptors and a wing game, and it didn't count for anything. and. Just one ten eight, and then our our uh, what's his name? Our sand deep guy beat zip. So another close one three two. Not as it didn't feel as close as the last one, just because the games we won felt pretty in hand, and then we had two losses. It just happens. But like in our last round, some of the the games were a lot tighter, like in our wins. So we're going into. Round four, we're in first place. No, we're actually in second. We're tied with undefeated Poland, but I think they had the tiebreaker, so we were technically in second. All right. They had beat our other team. So we knew a little bit about what they played, but not too much. Um, in this scheme pool, I end up playing the squatter's rights table again. Um, I would have been happy with interference or headhunter or squatter's rights. Uh, the interference game was just too good for Hamlin. Um, and I'll explain that afterwards. Anyway, I played Squires Right versus Nelly and Trick. He's the Polish captain. He did a battle report on it. Flame jump, eliminate, frame from murder, leave your mark, search the runes. I took the list from the first game, which involved fingers again. Obviously, with leave your mark, search the runes, and claim jump, and squatters, he's, he has a lot of things. Eliminate's probably not happening for him the way Lissy's took his Summers are so hard to kill. I kept taking Dirty Cheater because there's a lot of Eliminate the Leadership games I played. So I kept taking Dirty Cheater on Summer just so he would stay alive. I assumed he'd probably have Frame because it's too hard to do the other ones versus me. Like Claim Jump's really hard in Squatters because I'm already going to be around the middle and I have so many models. Leave your mark. Getting behind me in Squatters is just a waste of AP. The battle's going to happen in the middle. And he probably had Search the Runes, which he did, because Nelly drops him with evidence. He's going to be in the middle every, anyway, and Fiona has the trigger on her attack. So his list was Nelly, Printing Press, Fiona, two trappers, four dogs, a field reporter. I want to say that's it. 12 points for the dogs. 24. 34. It felt like he should have one more model. But he didn't. I know he had upgrades. He had a lot of upgrades, actually. So, whatever it was, he had a lot of stones, too. So, whatever it was, the points added up. Yeah, that sounds about right with all the stones he had. Okay. Um, the game kind of broke open for me really early. So, what happened was. He kept passing activations turn one. I did my shit. I summoned. I moved up. Fiona, like, rushes in to engage a bunch of my models. And I have... So I have frame on the slot poller and search the rooms. And what happens is Fiona, like, comes in to my lines. 
I think she killed a Bayou Gremlin. Was this turn two, maybe? Maybe, this, oh, this happened turn two. Turn two, she comes in. Like, with fast. And she tries to attack Bert, but I put the attack on Summer, and what happens is I push, because I have squealed, I squealed out. And that put me in range of a trapper behind a woods. Well, okay. Just to be clear, first turn he shot two trappers at my stop hauler. I had frame on it. And I don't, and I could heal with the slight demon, so I didn't care that much if it died. The thing is, if he if he doesn't kill it in the, if he only does like four wounds, then it's going to get healed by himself and the lightning bug. So he has to kill it. But I have like 13s in hand. So I'm very willing to like cheat my 13s. Because I didn't need him to summon to, to keep him alive if needed. And if he dies, I get my frame for murder. So it's like a win-win, and I didn't need him for healing. I didn't have to have him. He shoots him, he misses, because I had to cheat like a 13. I think I flipped a red joker for the other one. So I end up living. And his hand wasn't that good. It happens. Uh, so turn two, he comes in. Sommer pushes away, and he has a trapper behind a woods and with two dogs behind him. So... I give myself rams, I focus shoot the trapper, I have the high card in hand, boom, nail the trapper, I cheat to a severe, or I think I flipped the severe because it wasn't even, but I think I had, I had a cheat to kill the trapper because I do eight wounds and kill the two togs behind him. Well, that just puts me at such an advantage, he lost three models instantly. Um, I then summon another bayou, that's the only time I've ever summoned past turn two this tournament. Uh... He runs up and tries to... He's engaging a lot with Fiona. He runs up his printing press with two-inch engage. Um, I attack it a couple times with my bayous and then charge it with the lightning bug and kill it because I ignore armor. He has a trapper and two dogs on the other side that aren't doing anything. Like, I have bayous over there to annoy them. On the one flank, it's like Maris. On the flank that Sommer's on after Sommer just killed the trapper, I have... I still have fingers, some bayous, and Maris. And so I have more activations now because I killed so many models that fingers can go get a squat, a, a lightning, uh, a gram bayou can get a squat marker, and Maris doesn't have to. So Maris just flies over and shoots the field reporter. We have no cards in either hand, and I end up beating him both times I shot him and killed her. So we lost so many models. Turn two that uh, he couldn't win at this point, in my opinion. Fiona eventually hits the, the stop holder standing next to Fiona, who's next to Bert. He hits the stop hauler, kills it. I have a real frame. Great. I figured he has frame on Fiona because he took the upgrade that makes him numb to numb to the world. So immune to conditions. So I couldn't kill her with burning or poison. So I got her down to one wound by turn four and then just kill her at turn four and gave him the point. Uh, Nelly and her were dropping sea markers in the middle. But fingers just came in and started turning them all into mine. So he could never get searched the runes or squat markers because his fingers was there. And so it ended up 10-1. Very good game. I really enjoyed him. I had a nice talk with him afterwards. Uh, the team, our Kaladi tied the Karis guy in Headhunter. Interference was played versus their Italian. Um, we played Hamlin, and what's really hard is Talem. You can't do versus Hamlin. Mark for Death is almost impossible because you can't do it to Rats. You can't do it to Hamlin. You can't do it to Ashes and Dust. Dig their graves again. It's all peons and stuff. Leave your mark as hard because of all the rats, and or not rats, but all the models in general. And claim jump is also pretty hard because of all the rats. So it was really a hard game for the Nikodem player. Extraction. Larry won versus their zip player. The Sandeep. And Travis played Nelly and guard the stash corner versus Pandora. What ended up happening is the Pandora player went really deep. Only had one card left. Somehow pushed next to McTavish. McTavish punched her with Depth to the Guild. And he got a 13 of Crows. The Pandora guy didn't have enough. Didn't have a high enough card to make it a negative flip. He hit a Severe. Boom, Pandora dies because it's discard two cards or die. She's dead. Turn one. That game's over. Um, I think he still had a shot to kill her. He still had like 2 AP. Because he, McTavish was fast and Depth to the Guild. So he's like... Min three, but he has like rams in hand to give him plus damage flip, so he could easily hit a lot of damage. Uh, so we end up winning four wins in a draw. We really enjoyed playing them. So now we're going into the last game. We're the only team undefeated, but there are teams below us with one loss that could still come back and um, tie us or like win on tiebreakers. Uh, we thought we were going to play the Swedish team. 
but York Yorkfo won by enough to like jump them in the standings. So going to the last round, we're playing a UK team, Yorkfo. Uh, this was a, another interesting round where it's collect, stake, reckoning, stake, collect. So I figure I'm going to play a stake of the claim because. I don't think Summer's very good in the other ones, and I would have had to play Wong, but we have better people in those. So, with two stakes, Travis wants to play Terra. That's fine. He thinks Corner's better for him. That's fine. I take Flank, which I think is good for me. Um, I play against Jacob Lynch. I take Summer. I drop Fingers and a... I drop Fingers, his upgrade, and a slot Poller for a Pigapult and three stuff Piglets. This is to throw Bayous, but also to threaten their Scheme Runners. Uh, Lynch only had like eight models. Yeah, it was Lynch. I played Peter S Sidaway, by the way. Lynch, Puggy, two of those leaping monks, a low river monk, the emissary, and a trapper. I believe that was it, actually. Maybe it's only seven models. Um, he deployed first. The trapper was very close to my deployment zone, so close that I could set up Bert within charge range. Reckless charge range, turn one. And the rest of his stuff was kind of spread out. I kind of stuck to one edge where not a lot of his stuff was. Um, the, tr the the sniper shot one shot and ran away behind the woods. Uh, nothing too crazy happened in turn one, but I did shoot, throw three bayous into the back. Um, and then turn two, I started dropping squat markers as best I could. Now, he tried to attack. So, like... What a big thing that happened turn two is my pigapole killed one of his leaping monks. It also killed the low river monk, but that wasn't as important. It killed the leaping monk before it could do anything. So that's a squat marker down. It killed the low river monk. That's an activation down, but also his frame target. He gets two. Um, the other low, the other leaping monk, wandering monk, or whatever high river. I don't know which one it is. Killed one of my bayous before it could drop a squat marker. Now. That's okay, because now he doesn't drop a squat marker. Huggy had already dropped one near the very center. I had a Bayou that managed to run and drop one on my side of the board, but take Huggy's marker as well. So that's one up to me. I had a guy hanging back by Lynch who dropped a marker just early on and then died to Lynch. And I believe I dropped one other one. So I'm up on those. I have Leave Your Mark. Or um, Claim Jump. And I just have so many models. And I think this is the turn that Summer takes a shot at Lynch with dumb luck. And I flip for negative flip for damage. And I, I flip a red joker and a black joker. So I was like, he didn't notice the black joker. So he's like, oh man, I got a stone. Four, you know, 12 damage. He's probably dead. And I'm like, nah, zero damage. And I'm all sad on the other side. Like, oh man, it's all right. Uh, I think big things. Huggy gets tied up by a lot of like Skeeters and stuff. So just to annoy him. Uh, Shadow Emissary eventually dies to Bert and, uh, Bayou Gremlin. So he's just running out of models at this point. I mean, Lynch was alive, but Lynch had, like, a Skeeter next to him, and I summoned a Piglet with Sommer off of, uh, the Sniper. How did the Sniper do? The Sniper took wounds, I believe, from, uh, the Pigapult. And then got killed by Sommer. And then I just had so many models left that he, he never had enough models to, to stop stake. And so I was always scoring one. So that's always going to be 4-0. And then it's a matter of he had two for frame. And he he got his breakthrough eventually. But it's only five. So he, he was pretty capped at five at that point. And so once Maris... No, Maris died. Once Bert and Abayu got to the back lines, I just started dropping markers for a breakthrough. And it was over at that point. Great game. 10-4 to me. On my team... Uh, our Kaladi player tied Travis and everyone else won um, their round. So we ended up winning four games and tied one. So our day two was really good. We we won eight games and tied two. So we didn't lose day two. Uh, obviously we were the only undefeated team. So that put us in first place. And we were very happy about that. Our sister team, the B team, came in fourth. Good job to them. Uh, Poles came in third, the Swedes came in second, and then the York foe who we played last round ended up coming fifth as the highest twice UK team. Uh, we were really happy with how we did. Um, Travis being able to pivot from Nelly to Terra was nice. Uh, 
Jacob went Hamlin every game. I went Summer every game. Larry went Sandeep every game. And Hengel played four Kaladi, one Dreamer. His only loss was on Dreamer, too. So probably could have went all Kaladi, right? Uh, this format, I really think, allowed for that. Because you could pick your pool, and it was probably better off playing, like, your best master most of the time. But being able to, like, pivot a couple masters and stuff was was nice with, like, Terra and Nelly and stuff like that. I already did my comments on how the pairing system should work in the, another video. Overall, uh, Samra did great. I really wanted to play Wong. Like, I was getting a, the itch for Wong because not that many people were playing Samra. I know the other American guy did, and a couple guys on... Other teams played, I think, exclusively Summer, but I think he didn't win the game. Um, so I didn't see a lot of, like, what I would call top, top Summer play. Uh, Weakling won, I think he went 2 1 and 2? Something. I think he lost both his games. I think he went 2 2 1. But he played like a pig a every round. I don't know why, but I did use fingers three rounds. He did play, he did perform very well. Um, the reason you didn't see too much difference in my list is just because I was getting, I didn't have to play like the extractions and the collects and the reckonings and all that. So I was playing really scheme heavy pools. So I did a lot of like scheming. I took, I mean, I took claim jump every round, I think. No, except one. I didn't take it versus uh, the Nelly game. But yeah, it was just so scheme heavy that I just need the fingers was good for it, and I had a bunch of bayous. I just need to kill it. But, but bayous kill. I you know who I don't miss Lenny. Fuck Lenny. Like really, like honestly, I I think I play better without him now. Like I think it's even before his nerf. I think he hindered me. If anything, I can play so much more faster and more spread out, and I don't have this shitty ten point model doing nothing the whole game. So I feel like I play better without him. Um, because you can just give Rams with Sama or Skeeters. But again, overall, um, if you have any questions about the games I played or the lists um, or why I took certain things, um, just ask in the comments. Um, all right. Thanks for listening, everybody.